This video is sponsored by Film Objective. going everybody we haven't done one of these in a long time today we're going to be reviewing the Hasselblad X-Pan a couple easy things to talk about this camera is that it's a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera but what makes it different from the rest of the rangefinder gang is that it's a genuine panoramic camera instead of you taking two pictures side by side and stitching it together in post this camera actually has a wider frame than a standard 35 millimeter camera as you can see right here the mask is way wider and with that being said you have 21 shots compared to the traditional 36 but with each shot that you photograph it's completely cinematic with the nice Nice old anamorphic look that you see in theaters. As you can see with the particular X-Pan model that I have, not all of them look like this, but the Hasselblad X-Pan is prone to paint chipping. So like you'll see like more of this brassing, not really brassing because it's not brass, but uh, it does look like it's peeling. So a fun fact about this camera is that Hasselblad and Fujifilm collaborated to make the X-Pan and the TX-1. So the Fujifilm TX-1 and the Hasselblad X-Pan are carbon copies of each other. They're just under different branding. The X-Pan has this black paint and the TX-1, I think it has like a silver or champagne color. I totally forgot. But the X-Pan is prone to like paint chipping versus the TX-1 not being prone to that. So if you want to get into this panoramic game, uh, the TX-1 would be your way to go if you want no paint chipping such as this. The wooden grip is available on some models. The other models have like plastic grips, same thing for the TX-1. Oh, when you load up the film, instead of um, the film counter counting up to 36, or in this case, 21, it actually counts down from 21. So when you load up your film, it actually pulls the entire film all the way out of your spool and then it just like starts to rewind it back into the roll so that's actually kind of nice so you don't have to do like quick math in your head to like see like oh 36 minus whatever frame count you're on it tells you like oh you have seven frames left or five or ten so that's kind of cool a little bit of a easier workaround uh mentally i guess when you're out there shooting but yeah i think that's all of the facts that i can share about the camera itself right now we're going to move on towards my first impressions so initially when film objective sent me this camera i was really excited to take like very cinematic uh photos because of the anamorphic look to it but one thing that actually posed a very interesting challenge is the frame lines i just didn't um anticipate how much actually is in frame and i guess like nobody really does because this kind of format is not very common. It was a really interesting and fun challenge to slow down and be more meticulous and selective about what kind of photos I take. And that should really be the case regardless of film or digital photography. But this was like obviously different. I don't know if all the X-Pan and TX-1 lenses are like this, but for this particular 45 millimeter lens, the focus ring is actually pretty tight. So you can't really pull focus as fast as you would on other M mount rangefinder lenses. So just be careful about that. It's not gonna be a super quick system as you would uh, walking around the streets of New York or San Francisco and just like popping off shots left and right. You're gonna have to like either be really quick and like pull the ring really fast, which I might not recommend. You shouldn't force anything or you should just like take your time and take the photo and really make sure that you're getting everything in frame. Of course, when you're experimenting with a new film camera, you're gonna have that, you know, first roll anxiety. You're like, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I don't know if I'm exposing correctly. I don't know if it's going to look um, the way that I remembered. And when I got my first roll back, I was shooting on Lomo 800 and wow, the shots turned out beautifully. And like the colors, yes, like from Lomography 800 are like beautiful, but the, the aspect ratio of it, it's super duper nice. Like 
they weren't kidding. Like everybody who has told me about the X Band and the TX One, like they weren't kidding. Like how crazy these photos look. Like almost anything that you take a picture of looks like a movie grab, like a or like a movie still or a film grab or whatever. Like honestly. It's, it's a movie magic machine for any photographer out there. So if you're really looking for that kind of stuff and you're willing to pay the heavy price tag on it, you will not be disappointed because seriously, every scan you get back is like a movie still. Oof, so nice. I think in one of the next videos with this X Pan, I want to actually recreate uh, movie stills from you know films that I've seen like in the past, like maybe filmed in San Francisco or whatever. But that would be really fun. Maybe shoot with some Cine Still 800T or Kodak 250D. Um, that would be very interesting. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about is that this camera is truly not for everybody. It is a super niche machine. I mean, the first practical reason that you shouldn't get this camera is that it's mad expensive. I believe they go upwards of 2,500, maybe like $3,000 now. The TX1 is not even that much cheaper. And maybe even after this video, their prices are gonna skyrocket because the awareness of this camera is like growing. I feel like all YouTube videos about every single film camera just drives up prices. So apologies for that if you're trying to invest in one. Ironically, its greatest strength, which is the panoramic novelty of the camera is its greatest weakness as well. Because sometimes when you're locked onto a subject, you just have like so much extra space to fill in for the frame to be like, I guess, more intentional. Yes, you can go for a more minimal um, composition or you can do some cropping, but you bought this for the panoramic feature. So sometimes it can actually like get in the way, but that depends from like photographer to photographer. And, you know, I'm only like here to provide my own personal opinion. So you could disagree with that and that's completely fine. But that's one thing that I want to warn like anybody buying this is that it's super duper niche. And sometimes simplicity is the better way to go. Of course, if you really want this camera, if you have the budget for it, then go for it. But honestly, you should rent it. And that brings us to our sponsor of today's video, which is Film Objective. Film Objective is one of the coolest companies out there because there's tons of rental companies for digital gear, whether it's photo or video, but there's none for film cameras. And it's such a high risk when you're buying film cameras on eBay or in person because you actually don't know if it works and you're not sure if you should invest in $2,000 for like a Mia or whatever, but Film Objective allows you to rent out these cameras, maybe even your dream cameras like a Hasselblad X Pan before you even consider buying it. So there's tons of selections on there for you to experiment your film appetites and whatnot. So you should definitely give it a try. Thank you, Film Objective, for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm just going to wrap up my initial thoughts about this camera. I still have to like take it out for like more uses, like maybe to the Yosemite or maybe for like a more like movie intensive shoot. But so far, like I really like this camera. I have like my 35 millimeter here, I have my medium formats and having a panoramic camera in my arsenal would be cool. But would I actually get an X-Pan or a TX1? I feel like I wouldn't. I don't know if I would justify the price tag for the X-Pan specifically just for me personally reason being is because yes the novelty is super cool but i don't know if i would use it as much as i would to justify the three thousand to four thousand dollar price tag uh, maybe my opinion will change in the future but it's a super fun camera i feel like everybody should experience like panoramic photos and go around and have fun doing that but for me personally i don't know if i would actually invest in it to keep in my arsenal build quality stunning uh rangefinder patch immaculate the film scans the film negatives mm, exquisite but for me personally a little bit too rich for my blood again my opinion could change in the future but thank you guys for watching Ooh, it is so fun to make some film content again um make sure you subscribe like this video share with your friends because there's not that much expan videos out there and i'll be making more uh, in the near future but thank you again to all of you who watch this video i will see you guys in the next one peace